Developers always strive for a smooth user experience. UIs that glide, satisfying animations, and anything to smooth out the rough edges. When it comes down to simple transitions from point A to point B, basic tweens are usually enough. However, tweens are limited to static transitions. Our A and B points need to not move and need to be completed in a set duration. And we also might want to smooth out other values that are dynamically changing their final goal, such as smoothing out the movement of something following a character. The smooth damp method under tween service offers the perfect solution to our dynamic needs. Hi there, I'm Steven. Let's learn something new. Tween service's smooth damp method simulates a critically damp spring. Don't worry if that makes no sense. Imagine a spring that is oscillating, but slowly comes to a rest. This would not be a critically damped spring. But imagine we slowly increase the damping of the spring to the point where it didn't oscillate any longer. The spring would still have a nice smooth movement, but wouldn't bounce around. This is a critically damped spring. This spring effect can be simulated from code, which is what smooth damp does. Notice how the actual spring is smoothly moving the platform to the target position. Imagine we take that same smoothness and apply it to other things, such as smoothing out user input, camera movement, and much more. The smooth damp method can smooth out the values of numbers, vector 2s, vector 3s, and C frames. The API can be a bit odd at first, so let's take a look at a couple examples. Let's make a cloud that follows the user around. We'll create a local script within starter character scripts and add our cloud model as a child of the script. Let's get a reference to the run service, tween service, and the character's head. Then we'll create a reference to the cloud model and create an offset constant for how high we want the cloud over top of the character's head. Let's then create our update loop where we'll update the position of the cloud every frame. We will set our target C-frame as the head's C-frame plus our offset vector. Let's pivot the cloud to our target C-frame and see what happens. Notice how the cloud appears locked to the player. We don't want this. We want the cloud to smoothly follow the player. Back in our script, we'll create two more variables, one for the current C-frame and another for the current velocity. These values will be fed into the smooth damp method and create a sort of feedback loop. Inside our update function, let's call smooth damp and pass in the current C frame, target C frame, current velocity, desired smooth speed, max speed, which we will leave nil, and the delta time. This function will then return the new current C frame and velocity, so we can just reassign the existing variables to that. Let's feed the current C frame into the pivot to method and see what happens. Notice how the cloud is following the player now. We can adjust the smooth time to change how fast the smoothing operation occurs. We also left the max speed as nil which prevents any speed restrictions. Let's try giving it a speed of five and see what happens. Notice how the cloud struggles to keep up with our character. Unless you need to restrict the max speed, this value can be left nil. We want to simulate a revving engine. If you've ever seen this done before, you know that there is a delay between the throttle being applied and the engine getting up to max revving speed. While there may be proper ways to do engine simulations, we just want to make a believable effect. When our player holds down the W key on a vehicle, we will set the throttle to 100%. When they release W, we'll reset the throttle to zero. We need to use this value to control the pitch of our engine noise, but going from zero to 100 would sound bad and unrealistic. Instead, let's use smooth damp to smooth out the sound pitch. 
Now let's see what happens when we run this code. Our engine revving effect is working. Since smooth damp requires us to provide the velocity, which we usually capture and feed back in as a part of a feedback loop, we also have the ability to affect the velocity value however we like. One such example is impulsing, where we add onto the given velocity to simulate an external force impulsing the spring simulation. Going back to our cloud example, let's impulse the velocity of the cloud whenever the player hits the C key. When the user presses C, we will add an upward vector to our velocity. The next time the smooth damp function is run, it will have our modified velocity fed in. This will cause the output position to impulse upward briefly before slowly rebounding back to the target position. Let's run the impulse code and see what happens. Watch how the cloud impulses upward when I press C and how it slowly corrects itself over time. This impulsing example shows how we can modify the feedback values of smooth damp to simulate external factors impacting the spring calculation. Smoothing out rough edges can really help polish up your experiences. Players want to feel immersed in your experiences, but jagged transitions and jerky movements can ruin that very immersion that you're targeting. Smooth Damp is just another tool in the toolbox to help out. Smooth Damp is great to use when you want to continuously smooth out the result of a value over time, and when said input and target values might dynamically change. If the start and target values do not change, then using a standard tween might be more appropriate, such as interpolating a UI object from one position on screen to another. Some simple tips for when to use Smooth Damp. One, you want to smoothly transition to a specific value, number, vector two, vector three, or C-frame. Two, the target value changes, or at least might change. Three, the smoothed out value is a continuous process. In other words, you want to continue to smooth out the value toward a specific goal every frame. Now that you've learned some smooth moves, you're ready to create some satisfying effects in your experiences. If you want to further your learning, check out the tween surface documentation, link below. See you in the next one.